Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. So in this video, we will try to learn about the cons of this event inline event listener. So we have seen the different ways of event listeners like uh, inline event listener and also inline property and also the add event listener. We have seen about this three three ways of writing the event listeners, right? So each one has its pros and cons. But uh, this inline event listener, I have already told you in our previous video that this is not the recommended thing so why it is not recommended thing let's try to see so uh, each each and everything we'll try to see it in the bit more detail so before we go into the more advanced thing i would like to discuss a bit more details each of the three event listeners that we have learned so first one is the inline event listener this is the easiest way and very straightforward way of adding the events they generally should not be used beyond testing so what I want to tell you is this is the easiest way. So we have seen that easiest way and all those things, but this is generally should not be used. So just for testing purpose or anything, you can use it, but we should not use it on the production purpose or in the live thing when we are trying to do this, this type of inline event listener is not recommended. The syntax I already know, no, the button on click, hello, click me something like that. So button element, we can write directly as an attribute and in that attribute value, it is a JavaScript function. On click is provided by the DOM API keyword. So it's a DOM API keyword. If you misspell this on click and all those things, it will not work. So this is the one thing which I want to tell you. We can also write JavaScript code directly as well instead of calling the function. So here on click is equal to hello. So this is the hello is a JavaScript function, right? So instead of writing the JavaScript function, we can also write the JavaScript code also. What an on click is equal to alert high. In this place, what we have written? We have written alert hi that is that is a javascript code so when you click on the button directly it will show you the hi message so that is what i want to tell you so you can call the javascript function or otherwise you can write directly the javascript code everything looks good and good and well so up to now what we have seen these all goods fine but this way of method is not great and also not recommended so the way of method so this is how we are, what we are writing button on click is equal to hello or the javascript code which you are trying to write it it is not uh, great and also it is not recommended so now you may be getting it out that why it is not great why it will not get uh, says because for example the code which you are trying to write like this the html and the javascript combined you are writing an html file means it can quickly become unmanageable inefficient and also it is not search engine friendly so that is the thing so unmanageable we cannot manage the code if you try to write all the event listeners using this inline event listener we cannot manage the code and also it is inefficient and also it is not search engine friendly generally it is not a good idea to mix up your html in a javascript so here the in the html we are directly writing the javascript code so generally it is not a good idea to mix the both the html and javascript in a single file as it becomes hard to pass Keeping your uh, keeping your JavaScript all in one place is a far better approach. So all the JavaScript code keeping in another place in a separate file is a far better approach. So that is the reason. So all the time when you are trying to use script type is called JavaScript means we will try to give source file so that all the JavaScript code we will be writing in another JS file. HTML it will be like HTML code only. So this is what I want to tell you. So this is the cons of this one. So if you are having 100 buttons, if you are having one button on click means okay fine. If you are having 100 buttons which you want to mention the same thing means so each of the button you need to write on click is equal to method name so like that you need to have so that it becomes an unmanageable so that is the reason it is not at all recommended inline event listener to implement in your day to day life uh, code so but why we are i am explaining you is so because the uh, thing is uh, is there so i want to be so we need uh, to learn these all things so that is the reason we are, i am telling you we need to know all the available methods which are implemented so now let's go into this one so here what i am trying to do is so here we'll write a simple example so finally before closing this inline event listener i will try to give you a simple example i will we'll try to do a simple example and we'll close this inline event listener thing so here i am having an html okay so simple simple thing so just we'll try to do it so i am having here an h1 okay so welcome to the leela web dev channel and here i am writing one paragraph 
oh here i'm using lorem ipsum or something like that so these are the two things which you'll be having and here i'll be having a button so button so uh, change text everything to blue okay when you click on this button the text everything should be change it to blue and another button i am taking to red so these are the two buttons let's try to see the output how it will look like so if i try to see the output okay so what is this event listener so let's try to uh, event listener right so let's open this event listener here is this event listener yeah so now here so we are able to see welcome to the lila web Day channel this all so try to make this all the text as a center so if you want to make this text as a center so we take the style in this one i am taking h1 and p so we can write text align center so just try to make it as a simple center if you try to see the output so if i refresh this page everything is not in center h1 comma p so we need to keep comma p right now if you try to see everything is in center so now we'll try to make the buttons also in center so here i can have class is equal to button and also here i will write class is equal to button so i am taking class is equal to button a class implementation here we will see the button and i will try to make text align center this one also i don't know i want to make it as simple and we'll try to keep margin mm, 10 pixel comma 0 pixel if we try to see the output fine so now when i try to click on this button so this text all it should be converted into blue when i click on this button this text all should be converted into red so let's try to implement this one so for implementing this one so the best approach what i told you is so we need to maintain a separate js file so now we will try to implement the inline event listener only afterwards we will go step by step so if you have if you are already aware of this one means you can skip this video so but who are learning first time the code starting means so they can learn it this one they can see i am taking the app.js so let's create an app.js file so here app.js file so what i want to do so these are all the buttons right so these are all the buttons so here i can write on click is equal to so this one should be changed to blue okay right blue color and on click and this one i can change it to red color now these two elements i need to change it to i need to change the colors okay so let h1 element is equal to document dot query selector we'll take it directly document dot query selector of h1 I'm taking this one and let p element is equal to document dot query selector sorry query selector of p element so we got the two elements so we have a two functions that is nothing but first one is a function blue so in this one i need to change the color to blue so we will try to save it in the like this so now for h1 element and p element i need to change the color so one method what i can do is i will try to show all the possible methods so we can use the set attribute method and i will try to add an attribute style and here i am using the <coughs> here ECMA script standards template literal concept so color i can use like this okay if you don't have any idea about this one so you can watch my ECMA script course so there i have told you about this all the template literal concept also and what i need to do so i need to change this uh, p element color also so here let's try to take the p element so if i want to change it to red color what i need to do so here i am taking the red color and here i will change it to red color that's it so let's see that whether it will work or not so if i try to see the output let's refresh it and if you click here see it has been changed to blue color so it has been changed to red color so fine right so it's working fine so if you want to make more uh, uh, another way of implementation means so here you can take something like one div so you can wrap it in the div so this is css inheritance we are making use of the css inheritance text box so here i can do text box or some any any name you can give it and here instead of taking this one all so let so we have given the class right instead of giving the class you'll try to keep it as an id so that we can get an element node instead of html collection so text box or anything document dot query selector of actually we can use a class also with the query selector we'll get a node only and here hash 
text box right so this is the thing that's it so now instead of color these are all the things what i can do here text box we know that style dot color is equal to color we can use this one right so style i don't know why that one is coming like that and here this one also i can remove this one and i can change it to yeah color now if you try to see the output then also we can able to get the same output see so this is these are the different ways of implementing but we have implemented using the inline event listener so now you understood about the disadvantages of the inline event listener uh, why we know why we should not use the in inline event listener we have seen it and also we have seen with a simple example also so in the next video we'll see about the inline property disadvantages and a simple example also we'll try to see it hope you understood about this inline event listener if you have any doubts or any sessions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you